welcome friends to power plant guru's new video in this video we will understand the important concept of eccentricity in steam turbine eccentricity can happen in any large machine whether it be a steam turbine a gas turbine a compressor it depends upon the length of the rotor and the weight of the rotor as steam turbines are very large in size maybe 500 megawatt maybe 600 megawatt maybe 800 megawatt or maybe 120 megawatt so that is why it is uh, more prominent in steam turbine so let us understand uh, steam turbine eccentricity of the shaft in this video welcome friends to power plant guru youtube channel friends i am a mechanical engineer with around 20 years of experience in the field of power plant and i used to create small fundamental knowledge series videos for power plant engineers we also run doubt clearing sessions on weekends so if you want to reach us you can reach us through comment section and join our weekend classes let us continue to watch our today's video so uh, we are covering different protections of steam turbine in this series of uh, videos you know and uh, we have already covered few of the topics like over speed bearing oil temperature and pressure what is thrust bearing and how uh, uh, axial shift or axial displacements are happening and what to do to prevent those so these all videos are already created and available in the playlist or you can go to channel home page and uh, watch from there and then now we are here in the high vibration uh, topic but what i uh, thought that before under going to vibration let us cover the topic of eccentricity because i was receiving several comments uh, to explain the eccentricity uh, so that is why i thought let us cover the eccentricity first and then uh, it is a part of vibration only so that is why i understood to cover it before we go to vibration so uh, uh, so if we think of a large metallic shaft which is placed on two supports like this one support and this is another support these are nothing but the bearings bearings so whatever is placed on two large Uh, uh display i mean uh, last distance between these two supports so it will have a natural tendency to sag like uh, if you see uh, the ideal position of this rotor would be uh, which is in this dark thick line which is the center of this bearing and the center of steam turbine and the shaft is like this this is the ideal ideal position straight but what we know this is not possible to have a ideal position because of the weight of the turbine rotor itself and there are some temp uh, okay so here are the reasons why uh, there are uh, both so there are some fixed mechanical bows like it may be there while manufacturing very minor slight manufacturing error may also be there so that is a fixed mechanical bow it will be always there whenever you uh, go go to measure there it will be always there that is a minor uh, one and then there are temporary thermal blow bow sorry temporary thermal bow so in case uh, there are uneven heating or uh, uneven cooling of your turbine so it may happen that uh, sometime it gives a, a temporary bow to the rotor which may be equalized by if you run the machine on slow speed which is called barring then it will be definitely normalized and there is the, the last one is the gravity bow 
if you keep your rotor at standstill which is 0 rpm for long time then definitely your rotor will have a tendency to bow bow means this uh, like uh, it is the straight line and this is the bow which is like a banana so that is why your you will see definitely a bow in steam turbine when it is coming from the large shutdown any outage large outage or uh, either the machine is idle for some time so that is reason why bow is there now let's it it be there what is the problem with that so the problem is that when you start rotating your machine in a bow while your rotor is in a bow condition then what will happen this is right now uh, 0 rpm or you can say stand still and this is when you start rotating so you just you can anyone can imagine if you rotate this particular uh, type of thing it is going to behave like this it is not going to be in the center line always okay which is the ideal condition so if it is not in the center line if it is a rotor bow condition then what will happen it will cause the damages at the bearing because there will be a lot of vibration which is not intended and there will be internal uh, disturbance as well as because you know the casing is fixed then a rotor is uh, bow then what will happen then there will be a uh, low contact a uh, low gap at this place low gap at this place rubbing and all sort of problems will be there so that is why it is very essential or important to check the rotor eccentricity while you are starting up your machine this is not going to be very very important when you are already running because then the, the rotor is yeah, um, um, most of the time it is already stable condition when you are starting the machine then only this comes into the picture so let us see in the next slide how it is uh, going to be yeah <clears throat> so what i was explaining that uh, operators or the turbine users use eccentricity value when a, when machine is on a slow rolling speed and you are heating the machine to understand to make it sure that your rotor doesn't have a con bow condition and when you are starting so based on that you can see the value of your eccentricity it's depend the value depends upon uh, the type of machine and the uh, megawatt of the machine based on rotor length and etc uh, the eccentricity may val value may vary for a 150 megawatt machine to 600 megawatt machine or either 35 40 megawatt machines as well so let us uh, think of a condition where your machine is coming from a large outage and then you saw that okay this time eccentricity value is too high which is we, uh, the which is the value which we have not seen so far so what you can do you can slowly slowly rotate this shaft maybe with a mechanical arrangement or if the barring is on uh, and it is possible to rotate with the barring then what you can do you can rotate this shaft you can rotate this shaft by 180 degree so just to keep let's say your shaft is like this in the bottom it is like this then you rotate it to 180 degree like this so that the earlier gravitational force was pulling the shaft was like this that is why uh, during the outage it has become a uh, bow on the bottom side so what you can do you can uh, reverse that by 180 degree and then the gravitational force will be like this and then it will try to reduce it to somewhere and then you will see that uh, differences in uh, your uh, eccentricity value and then when when the vessel values are less when it was uh, slowly coming down then you can have uh, your barring started and slow heating started so that's all you can do so that is this point and now uh, the another important concept when uh, what people were asking me so how to measure that uh, how instruments are measuring that uh, eccentricity 
because it is intensity uh, the maximum values are here in this region but there is no nothing to measure so that's a very good point uh, in fact there is nothing uh, to measure that uh, in this area because here there will be uh, your blades stator blades uh, rotating blades etc all on this area so that is why if you see whatever is the bow whatever may be the bow it will follow a particular curve from bearing extra like uh, this cantilever position where the thrust bearing and the collar is there and <coughs> the uh, the middle portion so definitely it is going to follow a kind of curve so that is why here where where let's say this is the shaft this is the shaft please excuse me for my poor drawing and uh, there is a collar thrust collar so there you can have your probe installed which is uh, on the static side and then you can you can measure this uh, differences of let's say uh, the the uh, collar is like this and uh, your probe is looking at this now your shaft becomes like this then definitely the uh, revised collar position will be something uh, something uh, like this So definitely your shaft is going to shift the position and then that, that probe can uh, check the position of difference from this collar to uh, the probe earlier and the difference between probe to the collar at the different position. So it uh, this is how is it is measuring the eccentricity value and there is a calculation inside that based on this value based on this value this particular value how much it is uh, right now based on that the calculation is there which will relate this difference to this difference and that is how your you are getting these value is in your HMI screen which is a calculated value not the uh, this one is uh, exactly it is not repeated it is this values are these values are created based on the calculation which is derived from this number so hope I have uh, made a little uh, insight on this video which may be helpful for you. If you have any further question on this topic you can please ask in comment section. I will try to reply whenever I find time. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you.